Hi guys, Mr. Hill here with your maths lesson for today. So we're moving on from dividing a two digit number by a one digit number to dividing a three digit number by a one digit number. Not a lot's gonna change. The process will remain the same. It's just how we go about it that we're gonna be looking at today. Something to get you started. Some questions here, have a go at them. Some of them may have remainders in them. One of them is a three digit question. Don't worry if you're number four, you used to look at that and think, I can't do it. Have a go, see what you can work out. And we'll come back to this, or you can come back to this and come and have another go. So we'll work through the lesson and we'll have another go later. So pause the video here, complete these calculations, and when you're ready, press play. How did you get on? Probably didn't take too long. I think number four, some of you might have found it quite easy. Some of you might have, because it's three digits, found it a little more difficult. That's absolutely fine. So from the course of today, we'll learn how to divide a three digit number by a one digit number. So if we see a question like number four again, we'll think, do you know what? I can do this. So question one, 84 divided by three. We can partition 84 so we can use some known values. I know that 10 threes are 30 twice that so 23s will be 60 so I can partition that number and I know that 24 divides by 8 so I'm going to add the two together and I've got 28 now we don't know our 28 times table but we know our tens we know our doubles and we know our threes and fours and we know our other smaller times tables really well and certainly if you've been doing times table rock stars as well then you'll be getting better and better with them question two 85 divided by three. Now we've kind of answered this already because 85 is one more than 84. And we know 84 divides equally. We know three divides exactly into 84. So if I've got one more, I know that one can't be divided by three. So I'm going to have a remainder. So my answer is going to be 28 remainder one. We've got the opposite for number three we've gone one less. So we don't need to complete our calculation. We can think, mm, hang on, I can remember what I did last time. I haven't got 28 lots. I've definitely got 27 lots because that will be 81. I've got two left over now. So I've got remainder two. So if you've got those three, well done. The tricky one, 490 divided by seven is actually a really easy way of looking at this one. 49. I know 49 is in the seven times table. Seven squared is 49. 490 is 10 times bigger than 49. So if I know that seven times seven is 49, I need to make one of those sevens 10 times bigger. Seven tens make 70. So we don't have to know how to divide a three digit number by a one digit number if we know our times tables and the number fits nicely in there. The numbers we're going to be working with today, I'm really sorry, they don't fit nicely into a times table. They don't all end in zero and aren't the, the first two digits don't fit neatly into a times table for us. So we're going to have some with remainders and we're going to have some that we're going to need to do exchanging with. So let's get started. So 609 divided by three. So the process of using this grid method stays the same. All we're doing is we're adding an extra column to show that we're using hundreds. We keep the number of rows the same as the number we're dividing by. So I've got three rows because I'm dividing by three. If I was dividing by six or by nine, I would have six or nine rows. So I've now got three columns because I've got a three digit number, three rows because I'm dividing by three. Now what I need to do is start putting the numbers in. So my place value is what I need to be looking at next. I've got six hundreds that I'm gonna to need to share equally. And I've got nine ones. I don't have any tens at the moment. I might need to do some exchanging. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. First of all, we're gonna look at the hundreds. Six hundreds. I can put them into my hundreds column. It's going to be two to go in each one because I know three times two makes six. 
So there goes the next two and the final two. That's my hundreds done. Now I look at my tens. I haven't got any tens, so I don't need to worry about those. I can move on to my ones. I've got nine ones. And I know from my three times table that three times three is nine. So I need to have three in each row. So there's three in the top row, three in the middle row, three into the bottom row. Nice and easy. Now to write this number out, I've got 200, I've got no tens. So do I need to write anything there? What do you think? If you said, yes, you're right. I need to put a zero in there. It's there as a placeholder to show there's nothing in that column. And we finally, in the ones, we've got three. So it's really important when we're dividing, if we have something that's got no value in it, that we put a zero in. Certainly if it's in the middle of a number, if it's at the beginning of a number, we don't need to worry about it too much. So if there were no hundreds and it was all tens and ones, we'd be okay to write that. On the opposite, if it was all hundreds and tens, we'd still need to put a zero in the ones column to make our answer correct. Our next problem, 576 divided by four. We've got the same again. I've got my three columns, my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. I've got four rows this time because I'm dividing by four. Same process. I'm going to share the hundreds. Now I'm going to look at these first. Five divided by four. That's not going to share equally because I'll get one lot of four out of it and I'm going to have one left over. I can't divide. So I'm going to need an exchange in here somewhere. So let's go through. I'm going to take my four hundreds. I'm going to put them in my hundreds column on the left. What am I going to do with the hundred I've got left? I can't magically split it up and make four new hundreds. What could I do? What I can do, I can exchange it. So I'll show you this as well, using a part whole model to show you how we can move the numbers around. So I've taken four lots of 100 out already. That's gone in one of my parts for my part whole model. Divided that by four, I get 100. So in each row, I've got 100, which is correct. I can see looking at my grid, I've got one, two, three, four rows, four hundreds, one in each row. I'm left with 176. Now I need to find another way of partitioning that down. So I'm going to exchange my 100 for 10 tens. We know from our times table that 10 times 10 makes 100. So I've now got one lot of four, two lots of four, three lots of four, four lots. So I've got four lots of 10 in each row. I've still got one 10 left over. So going back to my part whole model, I'm going to take 160. That's going to go in my second part. So that gives me this. So I'm now left with 16. So I can divide 160 by four, that gives me 40. I can double check this by looking across my row and I can say, yes, there's definitely 40 in each row. I've got four tens in each row. I exchange my one remaining 10. So as we know, one 10 becomes 10 ones. And I'm now going to share these equally into my ones. Now I've got 16 and I know from my times table that four squared is 16. So there's going to need to be four in each row. So let's put those in. Four in row one, four in row two, four in row three, and four in row four. So we go back to our part whole model and we've partitioned 16 as the last part. Divide that by four and we get four. So our two answers are both the same. We've got 100 in our part whole model, sorry. We've got 100 in our grid. We've got 40 in our part whole model. We've got 40 in our grid. We've got four in our part whole model. 
we've got four in our grid. So both methods work the same. With the part whole model, you need to keep an eye on your values adding up, everything being correct. So if I add up my parts again, I get the whole. So our answer is 100 plus 40 plus 4, which gives us 144. So 115 divided by 5. This is where we start thinking a little more analytically, a little more mathematically about things. I can't divide 1 by 5. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is exchange my 100 for tens. There we go. I now have 11 tens. So I can start um, putting these into my model, into my grid. Got my five rows, I've got my three columns. I've now got no hundreds in my counters, so I'm not going to need them. But I'm going to have the hundreds row there or column there because I started off with a three digit number. So I'm going to share these out and put one in each row until I get to the bottom and I either have none left or I don't have enough left to do another lot. So I can get two in each row. I'm going to exchange my 10. That's going to become 10 ones. I've now got 15 ones. I know that 15 divided by five is three. So in each ones um, row, I'm going to need three counters. So there we go, all put in. I can then look at each row. I've got 23 in the top row, 23 in the second row, 23 in the third row, 23 in the fourth row, 23 in the bottom row. I've shared it equally between the five groups. So my answer is 23. Looking at the part whole model, we've taken 100 and divided that by five to give us 20. We've also taken 15 and divided that by five to give us three. So we can add those two together for 23. So our answer is 23. OK, your turn. Have a go with these ones. Have a go with partitioning and use your um, area model as well. Have a go with both of them. See which method works for you best. If you're not sure of either of the methods, go back. Take these numbers with you and work through the worked examples. Partition the numbers off that you find nice and easy to use. Have a think. Pause the video here to complete this. OK, how do we get on with these? So question one, 765 divided by five. Let's go through it. So I've partitioned off, I've split it all up. So if I'm using the area model, I've got 153 in each row. If I've used the part whole model, this is how I've done it. I've taken 500, so I've taken nice easy chunks of numbers to leave me with 265. I've taken 20, sorry, 250, because it's a nice easy number to work with. Because I know five fives are 25. That's just 10 times bigger, so it must be 50. It leaves me with 15. So again, make sure your parts add up to your whole. So I've broken it down into some really nice, really easy numbers for me to work with. And it's made it easy. Looking at number two. So question one, 153 is the answer. Give yourself a tick if you've got that one. Question two. So we start off with 201. We can't share two between three. If I've got three students and I've got two pencils, I can't give every student a pencil. So we're going to exchange the hundreds into tens and then we start sharing them equally. And then we have some tab, we have tens left over, so they need to be shared or exchanged for ones, and then they need to be shared equally. So again, looking at this, I know that six times three is 18. So if I make it 10 times bigger, six 10 times bigger is 60. And I know 21 divided by three is seven. So I'm taking multiples that I know from my three times table for this one to help me. So I've got 67 as my answer. I can check on my area model as well. I can count my tens, there's six in each row. That's 60. I can count my ones, there's seven in each row, 67. So both ways round, 
the answer works out the same. If you feel like you need to go back over it again, rewind the video back to the beginning, have another work through, bring these numbers with you and work through. So as I'm talking through how to solve the one on the screen, use your numbers, partition them the way that works for you and work it through so that you're comfortable with this because we're going to move on now. We're going to start looking more at the part whole models. So I've got 776 divided by four. So this is how I'm going to set my part whole model up. My whole goes at the top. I can't do four lots of, hang on, I'm trying to be too clever here. Let's work it through together. 400, so there's 100 times four. So it's a nice, easy one. Four hundreds, there we go. I'm left with 376. So 776, take away the 400, leaves me with 376. Is there another multiple of four in there that I can pull out? There's 360, we've got 36 in there. So 360 is a multiple of four, because I know that 36 times nine is four. Oh, sorry, 36 divided by four is nine. 360 is 10 times bigger, so my answer needs to be 10 times bigger for 90. I've also got 16 left over. So again, this is making sure that your numbers add up. 16 divided by four is four. And then all I need to do is add the three numbers that are at the very bottom together. So 190 and four for 194. Okay, before I move on, is there another way I could have done this? Have a think about it. I'm not going to give you the answer just yet, but could I have done it slightly differently? Okay, it's your turn now. Here are some questions for you to have a go at. Again, if you feel like you need a bit of extra support working through these, take the questions with you, go back through the methods, follow along with the method using your numbers. For question one, part A, talk about Jack's method with a partner. See if you can explain it to an adult that you've got at home with you, maybe a sibling, maybe your pet, or if you're really stuck, a cuddly toy will do. You want to talk it through so it helps you understand the process that you follow. The rest of it, have a go. Pause here, press play when you're ready for your answers. Here are your answers. Pause here, check your answers, see how you got on. Before I move on, again, I know I've said it quite a bit. If you feel like you've got stuck with these, go back, watch the video over again. If not, send me a message on Teams and I'm more than happy to go back over it. And if I need to, I'll do a short video to explain the process and I'll write it out, I'll draw it out so you can see it step by step. Let's move on. So we've got 638 divided by three. Here we go, set up part whole model. I'm gonna take three parts out of it. Let's try it through. So I'm gonna take 600 first of all, that's nice and easy. 30, because 10 threes are 30. I'm gonna make life really easy for myself. And then I've just got to work out eight divided by three. Well, I know there's definitely two threes in there and I've got a remainder, so I've got two remainder two. So my answer is 212 remainder two. Is there another way we could have done it? Remember that before you went and did your questions, I asked if there was another way of doing the previous one. I'm gonna show you how to do this, and then I'm gonna show you the other one. I want to see if you can work out what the other way of doing it was. So I'm gonna take 600. And I'm going to complete the first step the same way I did. So this time I'm going to take 36. Because I know 36 is 12 threes. So I can take that. I get the same answer. And I know that I can't divide two by three. So that's a remainder. So I've been flexible with how I've partitioned my numbers. I haven't rigidly stuck to taking hundreds, tens and ones. I've taken the hundreds because that was a nice round number to work with. 
my tens i've added six ones onto there because i know 36 is on the three times table and that's just left me with two at the end so let me share with you the previous question so we have it solved here how could we have done it differently we didn't actually need to split off the 16 and the 360 if we were confident with our multiplication or our division skills we could have done 376 and divided that by four so we could have taken a step out of it but that comes down to your confidence with the numbers if you're really confident with your times tables you think you know what i'm going to give this a really good go that's absolutely fine so you could just have had two parts to this model so you could have had the 360 and the 16. just a thought that there's lots of different ways so we need to be flexible as i said with our partitioning and how we go about it okay your turn now Tom has 317 pounds. He gives each of his five grandchildren an equal amount of whole pounds. So we're just dealing in pounds. There's no pennies. How much money does Tom have left over? Have a think. How would you lay this out? Pause the video here to complete your work. OK, you should have it partitioned out. And I'm sure you've had a really good go at solving the question as well. Let's just talk ourselves through it. So we're looking at 317 divided by five. That's the two numbers that we've got in there. So 317 is going to be the number that goes at the top. 300 is the number I'm going to partition out. So I'm going to take all the hundreds out in one go. I know that six fives are 30. I know that 300 is 10 times bigger than 30. So 60 fives must make 300. The other way of looking at it, 10 is double five. So 300 divided by 10 is 30, but we need to double that. So 30 times two is 60. So there's two ways of going about solving it. That gives us our 60. We've then got 17 left over to do something with. So I only really need two parts to my part whole model. Now you could have been clever and taken 15 out and just had two left. We can make it it's one less step for us to complete. So 17 divided by five, I've got three with a remainder of two. So the question's asking us, how much money does Tom have left? Well, Tom has two pounds, so that's our remainder. So that in our, the purple box there, remainder of two. He has two pounds left. So if you've done that, well done. Give yourselves a tick. If not, just rewind a few seconds watch this back over just how we've got through to get to answer this one your turn again pause the video here to complete these calculations ready for your answers here they are so again pause the video here to complete your answers i've got one last question for you before you go, have a go at this one. There will be remainders, and there is one solution to work this out. Have a go at this, see how you get on. How did you get on? Bit sneaky, the last question, I think, but I'll explain why in a minute. So your answers are here. So if you have four equal pieces, you have three centimeters left over. Six equal pieces, you'll have five centimetres left over and eight equal pieces, you'll have seven centimetres left over. I don't know whether you noticed, but each time the leftover is just under the number that we're dividing in. Can Eva cut the ribbon into equal pieces with nothing left over? Yes, she can. There are 839 pieces that are each one centimetre long. The reason for this is 839 is a prime number. And if you remember from before Christmas, prime numbers are only divisible by one and the number itself. It has no other factors. It has one factor pair. Right. That's the end of our lesson for today. You've done brilliantly. If you feel like you're unsure of some of the things we've covered, go back, watch the video, the, that part of the video over again. It will really help. Take care, stay safe, 
and I'll see you again for our next lesson.